Fiona Sincotta is a market analyst at City Index. Uh, Fiona, welcome. Good to see you. These figures show price rises dipping in September. Um, presumably that's good news. Should we be opening the champagne? <laughs> it's a little bit early, yes. Um, no, as you said, I mean, prices, price rises did just ease slightly, unexpectedly, um, but they are expected to continue rising. In fact, the Bank of England expects price inflation, CPI inflation, to hit 4% by the end of the year. And if we just have a look at sort of what's driving these price rises, it's the energy crisis, surging energy prices, um, supply chain disruptions, and also work short, um, labor shortages. These aren't problems which are expected to be resolved quickly. So we're expecting them to continue keeping prices elevated going forward. Now, we've been reporting on, obviously, everyone's reporting on the rise around the world of energy prices and, and food prices. I'm guessing these figures do not reflect those recent increases. That's right. So they don't reflect the really recent ones. We do. Ha we have seen rises in energy, for example, though that has been uh, a part of it. With, I mean, if we have a look at sort of oil prices, they have been rising steadily now for quite a long time. Um, and for example, fuel prices were a sort of a 19 percent increase um, in those inflation numbers. But that was before that fuel shortage um, that we had here in the UK just recently. So that, again, is another reason that we expect to see these numbers continue rising as we go through uh, October, November, December, because those numbers are going to be reflected, the higher energy costs are going to be reflected. Just a, a quick thought on the Eurozone, because inflation there seems to be rising more quickly than in the UK. I mean, is that all down to soaring energy prices? Why the disparity? So that is a big part of it. That is the main factor that seems to be driving prices higher. I mean, if we just have a look at in the, at the Eurozone, for example, at core inflation, which strips out the uh, more volatile food uh, movements such as fuel, um, energy prices and food, that's actually still down at 1.9%, which is below the ECB's target of 2%. And as we've heard from the ECB that they do expect sort of this inflation to be more transitory than perhaps we're expecting here in the UK. And the IMF weighed into it as well today, saying that they don't expect sort of inflation to be spiralling into next year. And that's sort of perhaps to do as well with the slack that's available in the labour force in the Eurozone, which isn't necessarily the case in the UK. Shoppers going to do their uh, shopping, though, whatever you buy, are noticing an increase uh, in the cost of living. I wonder how much further does inflation have to go before you see some kind of intervention from the central banks. Well, that's right, and I think we're getting close to it now. Definitely here in the UK, we've heard that the Bank of England are taking a, a, have adopted a much more hawkish stance just in the past week or so. We've really sort of seen them looking towards the possibility of hiking interest rates. And I mean, there, there are sort of speculation is, is in the markets now that the Bank of England are going to hike rates as soon as this year. And previously, that was going to be sort of, you know, first quarter next year. So there has been a move forward, um, definitely in the UK, as far as hiking rates are concerned. Because what we don't want to do is get into that situation where sort of rising prices these consumers really sort of reining their spending and growth start to slow. That's something that the central banks will want to avoid. Fiona, good to see you. Thanks for your time. Fiona Sincotta there at City Index.